Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and of course installing the InGen Evolution cold air intake with the oiled filter available for the 2011 and newer 5.7 liter Hemi equipped Challengers. Check this out for your own Challenger if you're looking to ditch the factory air box to pick up a cold air intake from the aftermarket world that's going to help your engine breathe better, give you a nice bump in horsepower and torque as well as throttle response and acceleration. This particular one comes in just over the $300 mark and honestly it's a pretty good option. This one here comes with a washable and reusable oiled filter that is not only going to filter out way more than your factory paper element could, 99.53% filter efficiency rate as a matter of fact, but it's also going to be a huge step up in quality. This has an eight layer cotton gauze finish in red that also has a wire mesh outing to help filter out as much as possible while also pulling in more cold air than that factory air box could. And we'll take a closer look at this comparing it to the factory box in just a little bit. Aside from that, this particular kit is a little bit different than some of the other in-gen options on the site. If you're browsing through the category, you'll see quite a few options from InGen alone, not to mention some of the other brands out there. InGen has their wrinkled black, they have their polished finishes with aluminum intake tubing, like their power flows, and then they have the Evolution. The Evolution is different in the sense that it uses different materials throughout the entire kit and has slightly different technology built in. I like the Evolution simply because it uses a roto-molded polythylene material, which is going to dissipate heat a lot better than some of the aluminum options out there would. So it's going to retain that cold air, giving you a smoother airflow inside because aluminum, while it does have a more kink-free finish than your factory tubing, isn't going to be as smooth of an airflow as some of the plastic options out there like this one. It is durable, it is super strong, it's heat resistant of course, which is a huge factor under the hood, and it's also impact resistant because it is a very durable material. Of course, it's got the InGen name on the side here, which I actually like. It's pretty subtle, but it lets you know what's under the hood. It also has a location for your air sensor. Now that sensor, typically in other options in the category, will just sit in with a rubber grommet. This actually has a plate to make sure it's oriented properly, which I think is just one step further that InGen took their technology to make sure that it has that premium quality. Aside from those two, last thing I want to mention here is your new Evolution Airbox. This is a little bit different than the power flow box you'd see in some of the other InGen options. This has an inlet that's going to go down a little bit farther. Some of the other boxes that InGen offers and some of the other boxes in the category don't go down as far. So this is going to put a little bit more effort into pulling in the cold air from under the engine bay for the aerodynamics that are going under your front chin splitter. Aside from that, you have a big, large, clear cutout here that is going to let you keep an eye on the condition of your filter. You can just pop it out, wash it, re-oil it, throw it right back in. It's as simple as that. One of the other things I like, and this is really just a small detail, I like the small details of some of these kits. It just shows you how much thought and time went into developing these. Some of the other kits out there use a separate bracket that you have to bolt on to the heat box to get it to have this little knob. Now, if you know how it works under the hood with these five sevens and you've done a cold air intake before, you know that there's a rubber retainer grommet on the inside of the wheel well under the hood for a knob like this to keep your air box sealed and in place. Some of the other ones use a separate bracket that bolts this up. This is actually built in. No need to bolt up separate additional pieces. I like when kits like this are as simple as they can be. Very minimalist, but still gets the job done with a lot of thought put into it. I personally like that. Finally, it has a lockable filter technology. You rotate that in, turn it a quarter turn, and it's locked in place. That will not move around. When it comes time for maintenance, boom, comes right back out. It's really as simple as that. I really like that built into the engine. This particular option, around 330 bucks, like I said. Install gets one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle us in the driveway at home, and it does not require a tune. That is something you don't have to worry about doing during the install process. Right out of the box, you put it together, throw it under the hood, and you're good to go. It's a direct bolt-on with no tune required. One out of three wrenches, it'll take an hour, maybe two at the most, depending on your experience. Simple hand tools required, anybody can tackle it. I'm gonna show you guys every step of the process, starting with getting our factory tubing out, so let's get to it. Tools used in this install include an impact gun, a ratchet, 15 millimeter wrench, eight millimeter socket, 16 millimeters deep socket, and a small Allen key set. All right, step number one for the uninstall, of course, just pop off your engine cover. Now, of course, we're working with a 5.7. This may be a little bit different for the guys out there with a 6.1, but shouldn't vary too much. Just pop off that engine cover and just set it aside. Next up, we're gonna do our sensor right on the side of the tubing that connects to the throttle body. It's really just a pinch and disconnect. 
From there, you actually want to remove the fitting for the sensor itself, which you're just going to twist and pull straight back on. This is extremely sensitive, so set this aside and just make sure it's out of the way of any danger. Next up here, grab an 8mm socket or a flathead screwdriver, and we're just going to loosen up the clamp holding the intake tubing to the throttle body. From there, you should be able to just twist it up, pull this back. Before we can remove this, we have one more bolt to remove as well as a hose, and then the whole thing will come off in one piece. All right, next step is the bolt holding the factory heat shield to the front support. That's also an 8mm. Just loosen that up and take that out. From here, we're going to disconnect the hose, the breather line on this end. Just going to wiggle it back and forth and pull it straight back. At this point, we should be able to disconnect this from the throttle body and pull it all up in one piece. All right, this will pull straight up, pull out of the throttle body. You can lift up on this end here and we're just gonna set all this aside. Now this bracket was used to hold on that factory intake at the extension portion. We're just gonna go ahead and remove it because we're not gonna need it for our aftermarket intake. So I'm gonna take a 16 millimeter socket and just remove this bolt. At this point, you can grab a 15 millimeter wrench to hold the inside bolt. Grab your 16 socket again and just pop off the nut on the outside. Right. This way the bracket's out of the way, but there isn't an open hole there. You can just thread the bolt back in there and tighten up that nut. Perfect. Step number one here, what we're going to do is grab that plate with the Allen screws already on. We're going to lift this up here and set it into place. You want to make sure you have an Allen key that's small enough to screw these on. So if you have a, say a 20 piece Allen key set, or something of that nature, definitely would help. Just wanna screw these on. Once we get it started, we'll be able to tighten it down. At this point, just tighten those screws down. You don't wanna strip them, so just get them nice and snug. Perfect. From there, grab your air sensor, align those holes, give it a twist, and it locks into place. That's taken care of. The next step we wanna tackle here is our coupler attaching the tubing to the throttle body. I'm gonna grab that coupler and set the larger end over the side of the intake tubing that's gonna go onto the throttle body. A little bit of a tight squeeze. From there, you'll have three different size clamps, small, medium, and large. Your large one is gonna to go to your air filter, so we wanna set that aside. The small one is this end of the throttle body, the medium one is gonna go straight over that and go straight to the back end. So if you need to loosen this up, grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead and we can loosen this up and then tighten it down. All right, from here, I'm gonna use my eight mil socket and just loosen this clamp up and slide this over the coupler. Looks like we have to get loose a little bit more. Perfect. From here, we're just gonna lay the throttle body clamp over top now, you don't want to tighten it down too, too much. You just want to get it a little snug so it holds itself in place. And now we should be ready to drop this in to the vehicle. All right, first step here is actually to grab your heat shield and you want to make sure you're installing the filter inside of that box like I showed you. That's going to drop right in and install to that grommet on the wheel well. And then it's going to reuse the factory bolt to go through here to secure that into place. So grab that, tighten that down. All right, the factory bolt is an eight millimeter, so just tighten that down by hand at first. Grab your socket. And just get it a little snug. Next step would be to drop in your intake tubing. You wanna set that into the filter first, rotating that into position, then downward onto your throttle body. All right, once you have it set in your filter, set it into your throttle body like this. Bring that clamp upward Grab your socket and tighten that clamp down on the throttle body. From there, rotate the clamp upward that's on the filter. Do the same thing. Next step is to grab the hose included in your kit. This is going to attach your crankcase breather hose with our fitting here. You just want to attach this over the end and just push straight down. That'll hit the lock there. Same thing on this end with the factory portion of the hose, connect those two together, grab this, and attach this end 
to the fitting on the end of your intake. It has that extension built in. Now there's only two steps left. Step number one, grab your harness, connect that to your air sensor. Once that snaps in place, grab your engine cover and set that over top. Perfect. At this point, you're good to shut your hood and you're good to go. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up my review and install for the InGen Evolution cold air intake with the oiled filter. Check this out if you're looking to ditch the factory intake to pick up a little more horsepower and torque as well as throttle response and acceleration. With an oiled filter that's washable and reusable for your 5.7, you can pick this one up right here at AmericanMuscle.com.